Hi guys, Dennis here and welcome to part two of Core Data for iOS. In this video, we'll dive into implementing our core data methods to populate our patient's table view. We've got a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. Okay, let's pick up where we left off uh, during part one. Go ahead and we'll stop our build here. And we're going to start off by adding our entities to our data model. So let's go ahead and click on our data model. And we're going to start out with adding our patient entity. So let's go down to the bottom, click on Add Entity. And this first one will be Patient. We want to make sure that's in the singular. Now we need two attributes, so we'll go over to the Attributes section. We'll click our plus twice. And I like to precede my attribute name with the entity name, so you might want to do the same thing. So that'll be patient first name. And this will be of type NS string, so we'll change that. And the second attribute will be patient last name, and that's going to be of NS string as well. Our second entity, we'll go down to the bottom, we'll click our button once again, and this will be for prescription, once again in the singular. And we'll need two attributes for this one as well. Our first attribute will be called prescription name, and this will be of type NS string. And our second one. will be prescription instructions. Very important that we spell these attribute names correctly as well. And that will also be of NS string type. Okay, next stop is we want to establish our relationship. So let's start with our patient. We'll click on the patient entity and we'll go to the middle section and we'll click the plus to add a relationship. Now our first relationship will be that of prescriptions, plural. We'll make sure we make that plural. Our destination will be prescription, and we won't be able to set our inverse yet until we code our prescription relationship. So let's do that now. We'll click on prescription, and this first relationship will be to patient, singular, because many prescriptions will be related to a single patient. Our destination will be patient, and our inverse will be prescriptions. Now there's one other thing that we should do while we're here. Let's click on our patient entity and we'll select our relationship and we'll open up our inspectors panel. And we want to make sure that plural has been selected, indicating this is a too many relationship. In other words, we can have many prescriptions related to a single patient. Okay, I think it's time to double check everything and to do so, let's select our graph style. We'll close out our inspector panel here. And this is a real quick, easy way to verify that you have everything coded correctly. We'll see here our connecting line, the line going to prescriptions. Let's do it this way here. The line on the prescriptions has two arrows and ends on the patient side with a single arrow, indicating this is a one to many relationship. And that's exactly what we want. Let's go back over to our table view style. And we're ready to create our entities now. And to do so, we simply, I like to select both so we can do them both at the same time. Go up to our editor and select Create NS Manage Object Subclass. We'll click on that. Make sure Core Data Target has been selected. And we'll click Create. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. We'll go over to our patient header first. Now, quick warning here, occasionally when you generate your subclass files, Xcode will create a forward class statement in the exact opposite file than what you want, what you're expecting. For example, here we have a forward class statement regarding our prescription that will be imported eventually into our implementation file. This sometimes can be generated backwards with a forward class statement on our prescriptions header referencing the patients class. If this happens, just delete the class files and regenerate again from the data model and that should fix the problem. 
Okay, so a couple of things to point out here. One of the biggest benefits of subclassing NS Manage Object is that we're now provided properties for our attributes and our relationships. So here we have an NS string patient first name, one for the last name, and our NS set of our prescriptions. Notice that we're inheriting from NS Manage Object, not just NS Object. And we also have our core data generated assessors down here on the bottom. So let's jump over and take a look at our implementation file. And the first thing you should notice here is we're importing our prescription class file relating to our forward class declaration that we talked about a moment ago. Also that we see here, instead of our properties being synthesized, we now have an at sign dynamic statement, which is the default for managed objects. And not that it's critical for you to know, but the at dynamic means that our property assessors are dynamically generated at runtime, not synthesized at compile time. Okay, now that we have our managed objects, we can get down to some serious coding. So let's first jump over to our patient's table view controller header file. And the first thing we want to do is import our patient class. Let's go ahead and write an import statement and we'll grab our patient class. And we're going to want to tell our class file that we'll be conforming to the NS fetch results controller delegate protocol. So we do that with angle brackets. So angle bracket NS fetch results first one. And that's the guy that we need. And finally, we're going to need to add a property for our manage object. So let's do an add property. This will be amount of time strong. And this will be patient, our manage object. And we're just going to call this patient. OK, let's jump over to the implementation file. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is import our app delegate header so we can gain access to our core data stack. So let's go ahead and do another import statement. And we'll grab our app delegate. And we're also we're going to need to import our add patient view controller. So one more import statement. And that will be add patient view controller, that guy. OK, so next we're going to need a couple of properties, one for our manage object context and the other one for our fetch results controller. And we'll just put those right in the private section of our implementation file. So at prep, oops, at property atomic strong. And this first one will be for NS manage object context. Just call it manage object context. And as I indicated, we also need one for our fetch results controller. And this fetch results controller, and we'll just call this. Fetch results controller. Okay. So we've already talked about the manage object context. So what's this fetch results controller all about? Well, in order to get data from our manage object context, we need to execute, execute what's called a fetch request, which incidentally is going to return an array of objects, and in our case, an array of patient names, which are returned in no particular order. So by the way, we could easily write a fetch request using a few simple lines of code and not code a fetch results controller, but then we'd have to write all kinds of code that's necessary to connect it up to a table view. So to avoid all this, we'll use our fetch results controller because its sole purpose in life is to tie fetch results to a, to a UI table view. So it's going to make our life a lot easier. Okay, next we're going to need a reference to the manage object context that's in our app delegate. So to do that, we'll need to implement the manage object context method. So let's just put that right below our first init method here. And that will be in this manage object context. We'll need a pointer and then manage object context. Add a couple of curly braces. Okay, so we're going to need to return a manage object. So this is kind of some ugly code. So let me go ahead and write it out 
and then I'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're using the UI application class to find the shared application. Then we're asking for its delegate. We're then casting it as our app delegate. And then we're calling the manage object context and then returning our manage object context. And all this ugly code will enable us to refer to our MOC just using self dot manage object context. That's a great example of a method you'll probably want to add to your code snippets. So next, let's drop down to the bottom of our page and we're going to add a pragma mark to identify our fetch results controller section. So let's add our pragma. Fetch results controller section. So we're going to need a method that returns an NS fetch results controller. So let's go ahead and add that method. And that is NS fetch results controller. And we'll need a pointer and fetch results controller. And let's add our curly braces. Okay, so much of this you're going to find in your code snippets already, but I thought it'd be a good idea to walk you through it. So we're going to write it all from scratch. So the first thing we're going to ask is, is there already a fetch results controller? And if so, we'll return that. So we'll use an if statement. So if, and we'll use the underscore fetch results controller, and we'll do a logical not. It's not equal to nil, and then we'll go ahead and return it. And if we don't have one, then we need to create it. And we start off by creating a, what's called a fetch request. So we'll do an ns fetch request, and we'll just call this fetch request. And that's an NS fetch request, and we need to do an alloc, and then just a simple init. Okay, we'll then access the manage object context and create a shortcut name. So we'll do an NS manage object context, and we'll just call this context equals bracket and here's where we're going to be able to use that self manage object context self manage object context now our fetch request requires an entity description so we write that and as entity description and we'll just call this entity equals and as entity description and we'll use the entity for name. And the first thing it asks us for is our entity name. And remember, our entity is called patient. So we need to add a string. So at sign. And you have to make sure your spelling and capitali capitalization is dead on in these statements. Otherwise, uh, you'll throw an error here. So, and then it's looking for our manage object context. And remember, we just named it with our shortcut name context. Okay, so there's that one. So now we need to set the entity name to our fetch request. And this is easy. We just do fetch request and then just do a set entity. And our entity name is entity. The next, we're going to create a sort descriptor. So let's do ns sort sort descriptor, and we'll call this just sort descriptor. And to get that, we do ns sort descriptor alloc, and we want to knit with key. And we're going to sort on our patient last name. This will be an attribute that we're sorting on. 
and you remember our attribute was called, we'll use a string here, patient last name. Once again, you want to make sure your capitalization and your spelling is dead on. And then we want to make this ascending, so we'll just put a, a yes after that. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to we need a temporary array to hold our sorted objects. So let's just create an array. And we'll call this sort descriptors, and we'll use an S on it. We'll make it plural. Sort descriptors. And that will be an NS array. Oh, look. And then we want to knit with objects. And our objects will be our sort descriptor, the singular one. So we're going to make sure we select the correct one. And then that needs to finish off with a nil. Okay, so next we'll assign our array to the sort descriptor property of our fetch request. So that's our fetch request dot sort descriptors equals sort descriptors. A lot of sort descriptors in this method, so it's easy to get confused. Now we're going to initialize our fetch results controller with our fetch request. So we do an underscore fetch results controller. And that's going to, oops, that's going to equal bracket bracket and it's fetch results controller. Oh, look. And then we want to knit with fetch request. And our fetch request will be fetch request. Manage object context will be context. Section name, we're not going to be fetching this based upon sections. Uh, we could, but we won't be in this example, so we can just put nil there. And this is going to be small enough, we won't have to worry about caching, so we can just put another nil there as well. Okay. All right, so while we're here, let's go ahead and make ourselves a delegate of the fetch results controller because we'll be needing that a little bit later. And that's done by using fetch results controller dot delegate equals self. Okay, and finally, we'll return our fetch results controller. But remember, this whole thing is just an assessor method. It just makes our fetch request and controller available to be called by others. We'll still need to come back and execute a fetch request, but we'll come to back, back to that a little bit later in our table view methods. So return underscore fetch results controller. And that does it for that method. So once again, this is going to be a method that you'll undoubtedly add to your code snippets, but it's really good to understand exactly what's going on. And I do recommend that you add it to your code snippets because there's so many statements in this method, it's easy to forget something. And once it's in your snippets, all you have to do is come back in and make slight changes, and that usually has to do with only your attribute name and your entity names. So word to the wise. So now that we have our fetch results controller, which, as you recall, ties all our fetch results into a UI table view, we can start to code our table view now. So let's uh, use our jump bar and jump up to our table view data source methods, and let's start coding this. And we'll start off with the number of sections in table view. So let's go ahead and get rid of our comments here, or our warning rather. So here, we're going to ask the fetch results controller, well, how many sections do you have? We'll grab the sections property of our fetch results controller, which is an array, and use the property count to get what we need. So we do that by doing self dot fetch results controller 
and we'll use the sections property and then we want to use count. Boy, code sense really comes in handy, doesn't it? Okay, next on to table view number of rows and sections. So let's go ahead and delete out our warning there. And now what we want to do is this will this will actually look a little foreign. So let me write it out first, and then we'll come back and explain it. Okay, so here we're asking the sections parameter of our fetch results controller what the section number is, and we get that right here, at a particular index. We get that from our method that's called for each row. We then assign that integer to section info, which has to comply with the NS fetch results section info protocol. Now, once again, this is something that should go into your code snippets. This is always going to be the same. So then we return the section info number of objects. Okay, so on to the table view cell for row at index path. So the first few rows here are just dequeuing re reusable cells. Uh, and we know all about that, so we're just going to jump down to configuring the cell. Let's give ourselves a little bit of room there. So the first thing we need to do is create a patient object and we'll get that from our fetch results controller. So we'll start off with patient and we're going to call this patient equals self dot fetch results controller object at index path and this will be index path. And now we can assign a value to our cell text fields. But before we do that, let's jump over and make sure that we have our cells set correctly in our storyboard. So let's jump over to our storyboard. And we need to find our patient's table view. There it is. Let's open up our utilities inspector. Click on our cell. And we want to go to the identity inspector. And we're going to change the style to subtitle because we want to list the patient last name as our primary uh, text and then the first name as the secondary. So let's choose subtitle. Okay, let's go back over to our code. We'll close out that guy. As a matter of fact, we can go ahead and close out our navigation uh, panel to give us a little bit more room as well. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is we'll code the text label. This is the primary label, so that's cell.textlabel.text equals, and now we'll use our new object name, patient, and this will be patient last name. And the second text will be the detailed text label.text. And this will be our object name, patient. Oops, equals patient dot patient first name. So we have last name, first name. And then we simply return our cell. Okay, so before we go to our view did load to implement our fetch request, there's one more thing that we should check, and that has to do with our uh, cell identifier. And we have our identifier with a capital C-E-L-L. -L. It's best if we jump back over to our storyboard and make sure that we have added that. So let's open up our project navigator. We'll jump over to our storyboard, click on our cell, open up our utilities panel, and click on our identity inspector. And our identifier has been added with a capital C. Okay, so we're good in that respect. Okay, so now we can jump over to the best place to add our fetch request, and that's in the view did load. So we'll close out our utilities panel, and we'll go back to our code, and we'll use our jump bar to find our view did load method. There it is. And let's get rid of our comments here. Okay, we'll give ourselves a little bit of room. 
Okay, so this is going to be coded similar to the save method that we implemented in our core view controller. First, we're going to create an error object and set its value to nil. So this is NS error. And then we're going to use an if statement and execute the perform fetch method against our fetch results controller. We'll also pass it the pointer to the error object that we just created. And if there's a problem, we'll print it out in a log statement and abort. If not, it'll automatically save. Okay, so we start off with an if, and we're going to be using a logical not. And we'll need a couple of brackets, and then self fetch results controller. And then we want to use the perform fetch method. And then we need to pass it the error pointer. Okay. And then we'll need our log statement. And our string will just say error. And we'll need a placeholder and error. And we'll also need an abort. Okay, and that does it for this. So let's build and run to make sure that there are no errors and everything works so far. And our table view looks all right so far. Let's open up our add patient. Cancel buttons working. Save buttons working. Looks good, but we don't have any data yet. So let's code that next. Of course, in order for us to create a new patient object in the add patient view controller, we'll need to pass it that object when we transition from the patient's table view controller to the add patient's view controller. So we'll do that using a prepare for segue method. So let's go ahead and we'll stop this run. And we need to go over to our patient's table view controller implementation file. And we'll just go about halfway down the page, and we need to add a prepare for segue. And there it is right there. OK. So these segues are typically coded with if statements as well. So we'll start off with asking if our segue identifier is equal to the add patient because we may have several transitions from this page. So we'll start off if and then we need to use a double bracket and we'll use segue identifier and then we we'll use is equal to string and then we'll do a string add patient Oops. Then we'll need to do a couple of things. First, we need to define our destination, and that's done in two parts. Let's give ourselves some room here. So the first thing we'll do is UI navigation controller, and then we'll just call it a navigation controller is equal to segue dot destination view controller. We then do an add patient and we get this because we've imported our add patient view controller up here so that's very important that we don't forget that. Let's scroll back down. So add patient view controller and then we'll do add patient view controller is equal to Add patient view controller, and we need a pointer. And then we just do a navigation controller, and we'll use the top view controller property. We'll then need to create a new object from our patient entity to pass it to the add patient view controller. So we'll use patient, and we'll call this add patient. You can really call it anything you want, but it, since we're going to be adding a patient, I think add patient is appropriate. And then we'll need a bracket, 
and an NS entity description. And then the insert new object from entity name. And this will be entity name patient. And manage object context. And this will be self manage object context. Once again, we're able to use that since we wrote all that ugly code. Okay, to recap what's going on here, we've created a reference to our add patient view controller. And we were able to do that because we imported our add patient view controller up at the top here at our import statement. And what we're doing is we're just casting it to the add patient view controller via the navigation controller top view controller. We're then creating a new patient object and we're calling it add patient. And then we use the NS entity description insert new object for entity name. And our entity name is patient, as you'll recall. In our manage object context, once again, we're able to use that self manage object context. So we need one more line of code here, and that would be to go ahead and pass the object. But before we do that, we need to jump back over to our add patient view controller header file and add a couple of things. So let's do that now. And the first thing that we need to do is import our patient class. Oops. So let's import that header. And the next thing we need to do is add a property for that add patient. And we'll make this not atomic, strong, and this will be patient, and this is called add patient. Okay, so now if we go back over to our prepare for segue, the last item in there that we need to add is we need to refer to our add patient view controller. Add patient view controller, and we'll use our code sense, make sure we select the correct one here. And then we want to refer to the object that we just created. And then we're going to assign that to the object that we created in the statement above. Okay, that finishes off that method. Okay, there's one more thing that we need to do before we build and run, and we're going to have to jump back over to our add patient view controller. And we want to make sure that, yes, we do have our add patient property. So let's go over to our implementation file, and let's synth synthesize that property. Make sure we need to go to the right place. There we go. And then let's scroll down to our save method and let's add the necessary code that we need here. So that'll be add patient dot patient last name equals underscore patient last name dot text. We'll need the second one, add patient dot patient first name equals underscore and we need patient first name dot text. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, we're taking the data that we input into our text box on this view controller, in this case the patient last name, and we're assigning it to our object add patient to the attribute patient last name. And we're doing the same thing with the first name. So now we can jump back over to where we left off on our patients table view controller and I think we're ready to build and run. Okay, the table view looks pretty good. Let's select add patient and let's put in a patient name. We'll just call this guy Paul Brown. And we'll click save. But we don't see anything. But I'm pretty sure we've saved the data. As a matter of fact, if we look at our debugger here, we can see that save succeeded. So where's our data? So what's missing? Well, we need to add our fetch results controller delegate methods. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do is let's scroll down to the bottom of our page after the 
fetch results controller section. As a matter of fact, let's stop off here and copy this pragma because we're going to add another pragma for our controller delegate section. So let's add that there and we'll just change this to delegates. Okay, there's quite a bit of code involved in this uh, in these next few methods. So instead of going through the the hassle of writing all that out. I'm just going to grab it from my code snippets and then we'll walk through it. So let me open up our utilities panel here and we'll go to the code snippets and fetch results controller. That's what I want. Let's close that out. And that looks good. Okay, so let's look at this error here real quick. I think I know what that is. Property patient name not found on object of type patient. Well, that's pretty easy to fix. The reason for this error is that it's saying, it's asking for an attribute from the change patient called patient name. Recall that our entity patient only has two attributes and that's patient first name or patient last name. So let's change that to patient last name and that should fix that error, which it does. <clears throat> okay, now we can go ahead and discuss all this and let's go up to the top. We'll start at the beginning and our first method is the controller will change content. And in other words, we need to tell the table view, hey, get ready for some updates. And we do that with a self.tableView begin updates method. Next one is just telling the table view that, hey, we've finished our updates using the controller did change content method. And then, quite obviously, we use the self.tableView end updates method. Our next method is a little bit more complicated. What we're doing in essence here is just asking, hey, what kind of change happened? Was it a update? Was it a delete? Was it an insert? And based upon whatever change type it is, we'll make the appropriate action. And notice that it gives us the change type in our method. So that's what we're going to key on. And the best way to do this is with a switch statement. So we're going to start out by creating a little shortcut to our self.tableView. And we'll do a UI table view and a pointer, pointer table view equals self.tableView. And that just eliminates the need to refer to our table view with the self.tableView. All right, now onto our switch, and as I indicated, we're going to key on type. So the first case says, hey, is this an insert? Well, if so, we're going to perform this action. The next case is, hey, is this a delete? And if so, we'll be performing this action. The next one, a little bit different. This is a change update. Notice we have curly braces in this one first thing we need to do is we need to create a new patient object and we'll call that a change patient and then we'll do the necessary code to insert that in our table view and then the last object in this method is a move and we'll do the necessary uh, withdrawal and insertion for this particular statement the next method is the controller did change section and this is a quite a bit simpler as you can see we're going to switch on type once again but we only need to identify two things hey did we did we make a change to the uh, did we insert a new section if so we're going to implement this line of code or did we delete a section and if that was the case we'll implement this line of code so as you can see quite a bit of code in the controller delegates but it's pretty easy to understand but I highly recommend that you copy all this and put it into your personal code snippets because in essence this code rarely changes except for a couple of little things like what we saw us do right here and that'll just have, keep you from having to write all this out. So I think we're ready to build and run again and see if our table view is updating correctly. So we'll just do a build and run. And now we do see Paul Brown in here, so let's try to add another patient, and we'll call this Sarah Smith. And we'll click Save. Oh, that works. Looks like both our fields are coming out. We'll do it one more time. And we'll add a Fred Jones, and looks like everything's working correctly. So everything works now 
except for one thing. We're still not able to delete. So let's look at that next. And lucky for us, that's really easy to accomplish. Let's close that out. And where we need to go is our table view data source method. So let's scroll up and find those guys. And here we are. And we're looking for the override to support editing the table view method. And that's, here it is. And that's commented. So let's uncomment that and gain access to this method. Okay, taking a look at this, we can tell that there's a few things right off the bat that we can get rid of. For example, the second else if UI table view cell editing style insert, we've already handled all that with our protocol methods that we just implemented for the fetch results controller. And we're not going to need uh, this statement about delete rows at index path, so we can get rid of that. So to code this properly, we just need to do a couple of things. And it starts off by gaining access to the manage object context. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's in its manage object context. And we're just going to call this guy context equals self manage object context. And we could have done a self dot manage object context there as well. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create an object that we're going to use for deletion. And we use our patient and we'll make our object. We're just going to call this patient to delete. And then that's going to equal self.fetch results controller object at index path index path. Okay. Now we need to apply the delete object method against our context. So we'll use brackets and use context. And we want to go delete object and make sure that we go with the delete object singular. And then it asks us for what manage object do we want to delete. And of course we want to delete the one that we just created. So that is patient to delete. Okay, now we still haven't saved our changes, so we need to code a save statement once again. So the first thing that we're going to do is create an NS error. So NS error, and we'll just call this error, and we'll set it to nil. Oops. Set it to equal to nil. And then we'll use our if statement. We'll call the save method against our manage object context and then check for the negative. And if it fails, we print a log statement. Otherwise, it's save. So we do if, and then we do a negative, and then a, and then a bracket, and then we need the context, and then we call save against that context, and then we need to add our error pointer. And we got that. And now we need our log statement. And a placeholder. And error. Okay, that looks good. Let's build and run and see what we have now. Okay, we got our Paul, Fred, and Sarah again. Let's go ahead and add one more, make sure everything is still working. And we'll call this, oops. James Green. Okay, everything's still working. Let's see if our delete's working. So let's swipe, delete, it resorts everything. So that's looking good. Let's do it one more time. Swipe, delete. So it looks like everything's working the way it's supposed to. Okay, so ends part two of Core Data. We've got a lot done in this video, but we're not quite finished yet. We still need to code our prescriptions table view controller, which will introduce us to one of the greatest aspects of Core Data, and that is NS Set. That's all about tying relationships up neatly so we don't have to write a lot of code. So I'll see you in part three, which, is, which will be the final part of our series, and we'll finish this project up. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.